welcome back everyone, Toysha's here, and I am back yet again for yet another Hasbro Marvel Legends news update. Haven't done one of these in quite some time. Usually, it's always about McFarlane Toys. Lately though, with X-Men 97, really brought me back to Marvel Legends, and that coupled with what Hasbro has been doing recently. MCU, the movie stuff, has been pushed to the background. We've been getting so many glorious comic book figures, retro figures, Things that I have been wanting to see for a long time. So I'm very happy. Months, two years ago, we'll say up until around this year, that's when I finally started going, oh, well, look at that. They're they're doing fun stuff again where I felt that they kind of got stagnant a little bit. They're kind of coasting on MCU stuff, and that's just not my thing, so it kind of took me out of it. But it's been kind of peppered into things that we've already gotten. So that's it's a nice smorgasbord of of various Marvel properties instead of just being so heavy-handed on one, whereas I'm like, eh, it's not really beating my fancy. We got retro figures, we've got animated figures, we got all these great things that I love to see. So that's really what has brought me back, and that coupled with, again, the fun of X-Men 97. And with that being said, we have some very fun stuff to be talking about today with the Hasbro Pulse fan stream that they did. Ryan and Dwight took us through it. They went over some prior release, prior shown figures like the new recent man thing. And I say new in the sense of it has new parts and pieces. It's not going to be a giant man thing, unfortunately, like I think a lot of people were kind of hoping for. If you hold up the, the old Bell the Figure, which I actually really like in comparison with this one, I like my Bill the Figure better. This one has a little bit more paint. It has a new head sculpt. It's a lot more of the MCU Werewolf by Night, which I actually did enjoy. I thought that that was a lot of fun. This one's a little bit on the fence for me as I already have Man-Thing. I do like Man-Thing, but I don't really need two. So if you're going to do any type of Man thing for the Hasbro era, as opposed to let's say you know Toy Biz era, and then even prior to that, the original Toy Biz era. I'll stick with the Build a Figure for now, but things could definitely change. But I'd like to see more Werewolf by Night figures. And even though yes, it is MCU, I figure that if you get more Werewolf by Night figures, characters, you could kind of fudge them into your Marvel Legends collection, or just do the comic book versions. Would love that as well. They also went over the recent Cabal 3-pack. That's an Amazon exclusive. To be honest with you, this one doesn't do a whole heck of a lot for me. It's a really well done pack. It's a it's really good for those of you that have missed these particular characters. Although I will say Taskmaster is the standout for me because I think that's a much better looking Taskmaster. Diamond Select did an amazing Taskmaster, of course, he's in that 7-inch scale, so he's too large for Marvel Legends. But the Doctor Doom has a cloth cape. He looks cool. I already have Doctor Doom. I have Doctor Doom many times over. They've updated a few things here and there. And then you have the Iron Patriot, Norman Osborn, of which that, the whole idea of, of using Norman Osborn for the Dark Avengers, and it just never sat well with me. I know a lot of people are fans. It's Norman Osborn is the Green Goblin, and then he died. And that was it. But they keep bringing him back. Now he's back in the comics. It making no sense. So for me, yes, I'm very much that stickler for how I like to see my Norman Osborns. But you can... Well, I'll put the link down in the description below. This has kind of been in and out of the pre-order. It really, I think it did sell pretty well. Then it kind of came back in from time to time. So I'll put the link if you're interested. As with Man-Thing, if you'd like any of these, as usual, yes, affiliate links will be down in the description below. To continue the Marvel 85 Years collection, which I think has largely been a home run, at least for what I'm seeing. There's a nice cavalcade of various characters, and I think that that fits a fair, a fair event of 85 years in terms of Marvel. You got retro stuff, you've got newer things, old things, and then you got the Danny Ketch on the Ghost Rider cycle, so that's the standout for me, if I'm being honest. I really like the Warbird, and I do like the Luke Cage with the Iron Fist. I think that's cool. All the rest of them are kind of, yeah, okay. I mean, the Venom, don't get me wrong, the carded, but it's not really the animated Venom. It's just another Venom of which I'm like, yeah, well, I've got thousands of those at this point. So the final figure for this Marvel 85 Years event will be Odin. And I was actually surprised. Now, I have the old Build-A-Figure Odin. I enjoy, and, they, and what really made me happy was that they specifically said they worked with 
I guess the Jack Kirby estate to make him more Kirby-esque. You can really see that in a lot of instances. I don't know about the actual face sculpts. I'd have to kind of see it more in hand. But he's more of that chunky type figure. He's got multiple hands, accessories, headdresses, the more ornate headdress that Jack Kirby would definitely draw. So in that sense, this one surprised me. Of course, this has been teased and you're like, oh, yeah, of course, this is coming, right? Eventually, we'll see what it looks like. Didn't think he was going to go this route. He's got a cloth cape as well. They're instituting more cloth capes, it seems. McFarlane did that. Now Marvel Legends is, of course, doing it. Yeah, Odin is definitely a bigger figure. Stands around eight inches tall. That's how I would see an Odin figure. Kind of reminds me of some of those figures from the Thor multi-pack from STCC, which if you have those, will probably go well with Odin. So in that sense, yes, more, more Jack Kirby, actually Jack Kirby art inspired figures. I would love to see that. If you like Odin, if you want to pre-order him, now depending on when you see this video, obviously it's going to be a little bit of a ways off, but June 27th, it will be a Pulse and other mainline retailers, so you really don't have to worry about this one. Eventually, it should even hit like targets. They've been starting to get Angel, and you've got the new Sam Wilson Captain America, so wouldn't worry about this guy too much, but again, if you want to put your pre-orders in, you can definitely do that, and I love the, <laughs> he's got the Ravens. <laughs> More Ravens, just like that old Toy Biz Spider-Man and the Scarecrow pack with Chameleon and all that. You come with Ravens, so you got to have more of those crows, Ravens, birds that uh, Odin definitely likes. Now, before continuing on, I want to institute something different. I'm going to try this out. What are the fans saying? What are the people saying out there as I post this on my social media? What are the comments, good or bad? Let's talk about it. So in the case of Odin, we have Nowhere Man on Instagram. Holy crap, on a cracker, he says. He looks fantastic. And I will agree with you. I think that this Odin figure actually does look pretty cool. It looks a lot better than the Builder figure. I'll tell you that. Papa Sriracha, $60 for three points of articulation. Watch. Jason Lee, 7128, had a response. Nah, that's Super 7, which... Yeah, Marvel Legends, we can all agree, have been getting up in prices, but that's actually what kind of drawn me back a little bit to Marvel Legends, is the price points have kind of started to dip a little bit in our favor. A little bit. Not something crazy. I would hope that this Odin figure wouldn't be more than around, based on their price points, 50 bucks. It would be beautiful if it was 40 but I'm going to probably lean towards the $50 price point, like all the other deluxe figures. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not ideal, let's be honest, but that's how things are going, and it's just <laughs> nothing you can do about it unless you just wait for a clearance, which that's what I recommend as well. If you don't want it, if you're totally on the fence, wait. Just wait. Don't bother pre-order. Just put it in the back of your mind. Say, like, oh, yeah, Odin eventually, right? Something like that. The ones that you really want, grab them. Don't think about it. Don't think twice. You know that you really, really, really want that one. Don't be on the fence about it. Just grab it. But the ones that you're like, eh, just wait till clearance. Trust me on that. And then we have Child of Acer. They really did keep that spear mold from 10 years ago, huh? Yes, it definitely looks to be the exact same one. It might be different colored plastic this time around, but uh, in many cases, yes. <laughs> they like to keep their accessories, and if it works, it works, but yeah, it looks to be the same exact larger spear. Count Kaiju says, such chunk. Yeah, that's what I like to see. If you're going to go Jack Kirby, if you're going to go those old school type drawings for certain characters, Jack Kirby put some heft, some armor on those big dudes. And uh, yeah, that's what I want to see. I want to see some such chunk going on. And then you have JJMX, is that all the reveals, he asks. No, we're just getting started. Because Target will be having an exclusive movie Venom. The Venom that you will kind of see from Let There Be Carnage. Although, as you can clearly see, the little mini symbiotes did not happen in that movie. And me thinks it was supposed to happen, or in some cases, it's promo arts, art that they were going to use eventually. Hey, you know, maybe we'll think of this idea. Kind of looks like Venom the Madness. So that's where I'm kind of interested in this figure, although it looks to be the exact same one. They did say that they've updated the paint. So if you're interested in that, that might be kind of cool for you. It's another Venom, another movie Venom. There's nothing too crazy. Hot Toys 
when they did their Venom, they had all those little symbiotes popping up. I like that. In that sense, that got my attention a little bit. But as you can see, yes, the Let There Be Carnage Carnage is coming. Venom is is a lot smaller in that movie than Carnage, which was, you know, you know how that movie <laughs> went. But uh, yeah, this will be a Target exclusive eventually. There's no set pre-order date just yet. So what are the people saying about this? Arak.nid7 says, bruh, it's just a re-release. And he's got his face palming. And then Digo Quint. <laughs> I'm going to butcher these, you people in your Instagram names. But he responds with, what if people didn't get the first one? Re-releases aren't a bad thing. And then where he get them wonderful toys says... The first one didn't exactly have the tendrils, so not exactly. So yeah, that's my point, is that this is a, a kind of a newer Venom with those tendrils. It it sparks my interest, if any, right? So I love seeing little things like that. So this is a maybe in my books. The Amazing Spider Guy says, should have at least come with some glow stick accessories. As bat poop crazy as those Venom films have been, and then we have The Last Dance coming, which... Looks to be right on the money with that. <laughs> yeah, Venom could have come with some glow sticks. He could have come with the, the glowy necklace. That would have been kind of cool. See, I like to see that type of thing. If you're going to do reissues, re-releases of certain characters, go the Necker route. Go, go bat poop crazy with a bat poop crazy Venom movie figure. And then it says, the underscore Amerapino says, why is Carnage taller? Well... The official Bass 5 says because he was taller in the movie, Venom, let there be carnage. And then Red Hood, the collector, says because he was in the movie. So, yes, if you haven't seen the movie, watch the movie <laughs> and you'll have all your answers. Now, moving on, we have a new retro carded figure. And before we get into it, I'm going to say that this X-Men collection, the yellow and blue suits, the trainer suits, this was one of the most well put together Marvel Legend releases that I've seen in a while. Everything was pinless. Every character had powers. Everything was well articulated. Everything was pretty much spot on from the looks, the powers, the heights, comparisons, everything like that across the board. Sure, you had to get two, three packs and a single figure to kind of complete this collection. It wasn't that much of a stretch, but we finally have for that original cover, Professor X. He will be a Walmart exclusive, again, retro-carded Walmart exclusive. He will have the blue cape. It's more of the interior art, as they said, during the whole panel event. Now, for the actual cover, I would have preferred more of the gold headdress. Dwight did mention that there are multiple looks, multiple color styles for this Warlord version of Professor X. So if you're interested, as I am, while I, I do like this, I would have preferred other colors. He didn't mention like the purple kind of variant to that. I would like to see them do this again, even though I never like to see more than one. It just kind of gets old after a while. I wish that they had various colors in the box, to be quite honest with you. Now, he does come with an unmasked Professor X, has more of a smiling, smirking head, as you'll know, Yes, he is walking around. He has a harness on. That's how he's able to walk. He's got the blue cape. He's very much armored up for his warlord look, and he will go really nicely with Lalandra. So you've kind of started to complete all these teams, all these looks, and of which I am very happy about. So again, Walmart exclusive, no pre-order information just yet, other than it's coming soon, so don't worry. But it looks to be later in the year. That's what they did kind of say timing-wise. They kind of said two things. They kind of said summer and then later in the year. So sometime after Comic-Con, we'll just say, what are people saying about this? He who is says, if we're going in that direction, want Eric the Red. And that's what I'm saying. I responded with that. I would love to see them do Eric the Red. I think that that would be a fun figure, as bat poop crazy as his design and character costume is. More of that, more of the X-Men space characters. Would love to see Eric the Red. Jason.Lee.718 says that smiling Xavier head just screams Onslaught coming. Onslaught's second coming, or if they kind of want to build upon the prior release, build a figure Onslaught and really deck him out, give him some of that crab armor. Wouldn't mind that at all. Kind of like the old... Toy Biz build a figure than when they did Onslaught. Multiple looks for Onslaught. Bigger Onslaught would be welcomed. I really enjoy that old Onslaught, even though you had to get 
another figure, right? To get the, the <laughs> I think it was Rogue. You had to get the actual Magneto helmeted kind of onslaught figure because it was that weird red skull onslaught. But I digress. Yes. Uh, more onslaught, especially with all the Marvel vs. Capcom stuff that's been going around lately. Would definitely welcome that. Moving on, we have Rogue. She's going to be an Amazon exclusive. This is kind of, sort of, we'll say Rogue in her first appearance. Kind of, sort of, X-Men 97 if you've watched the last two episodes of the first season. So in that sense, that is a welcome figure. I will definitely be grabbing this two-pack. But before we get to that, Rogue has two head portraits, multiple hands. She's pinless, double-jointed. You get the idea. All the Marvel Legend articulation you could want. Destiny will be the other figure. So, yes, you are completing that Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. A lot of people have said, oh, I want Mystique. We've had so many Mystiques. I'm sure they'll do another Mystique eventually. They just did the cell shaded one as well. But it's nice to have this version of Rogue and then Destiny. So I'm very excited for both. Again, Amazon box set, two-pack, exclusive. No details on when it's arriving just yet, but just stay tuned to my socials and we'll have all the information coming soon. What are the people saying? Evil Kim 33, not a fan of the rogue head sculpt. She wearing hairspray. And yeah, it looks pretty bad, says Super Ultra Omega. And then Woody Woof, says someone at Hasbro, has a really weird thing against cleavage. That's not how V-cuts work. Yes, I kind of agree with all three of you here. I don't like... Most of the head portraits that they got going on with Rogue, I'm more so interested in the body so I can put the X-Men 97 head on there, right? This kind of comes to sometimes with collecting Marvel Legends. It is a very slicked down hairdo. I kind of like one more than the other. We'll just say Destiny is definitely the highlight of the box overall for a complete figure. And yes, how they've been portraying women figures, not all of them, but for most, we'll say 90% of them, they tend to go more in that. Well, it's for kids. Well, that's the mindsets. And then let's not go too crazy, Disney. It's, it's that, unfortunately. You go back to Diamond Select, the old school Toy Biz Marvel Legends. <laughs> they knew what they were doing. ALR.WTX says, I wished it was Destiny Mystique, but still hopeful. And then NXP.Gamer with the classic joke, coming soon to Ross, which, well, some Amazon exclusives have been going to Ross, so he ain't wrong in that sense. But to have Destiny Mystique and Rogue, that wouldn't have been a bad three-pack. But again, like I said, they just did Mystique. If you're going to do Mystique once again, make it a good one. That's all I'm going to say. Marvel Legends team, make it a good Mystique. Make it the best Mystique we've ever seen, if you're going to redo Mystique. Moving on, we have a brand new Jean Grey Phoenix figure. Now, I just recently, <laughs> to go back to the recent comment from Ross, I got that new retro, well, I should say new, but the retro carded Phoenix in her red and yellow gear. So a new Phoenix. Now, this is on the upcoming Warbird articulation. Don't worry. Target will have them. Target will have them aplenty. You didn't miss it. It's just the pre-order. Don't worry. You'll eventually get your Warbird figure. But we have this new Jean Grey Phoenix, of which she has two head portraits when she's just, yay! And then she goes, nope, I'm not having it today, Cyclops. No more telepathic communication with Madeline Pryor. But overall, it's a good-looking Phoenix. And it's going to be more of a deluxe set. You've got some wispy fire as a base. You've got one heck of a cool Phoenix Firebird, which totally takes me back to the whole... Toy Biz Marvel Legends, except it's missing the clip. You can't clip her in. But you can definitely fix the Phoenix to the base. And honestly, I think it looks really cool in terms of different parts and pieces to then make your ideal version of Phoenix. They combine. You can have Jean Grey atop the Phoenix form that you'd like. You can inner swap and do all that fun stuff with the different head portraits as a deluxe Jean Grey X-Men offering for as many Jean Greys as I have, while it is kind of retro Toy Biz inspired, while also doing some Something new, Yeah, I would say overall, it's a home run for a Phoenix figure. As far as what people are saying, you have Roger Duke, the head sculpts, the TRU 2-pack are still supreme. I'm not going to disagree with you there. I think that those head portraits are still some of the best in terms of what we've gotten for Jean Grey. They very much encapsulate the ferocity of the Phoenix Force, and I think that makes Jean Grey look good. I like the wild hair. He's definitely not wrong. These are not bad-looking new head portraits, but the old ones, well, hopefully you can swip-swap them and use them all. 
The Bearded Cobra says, that's gorgeous. Uncanny Ken says, oh my God, she's perfect. That's largely what people have been saying. It's been unanimous in the terms of, yeah, I think that that has gone over well for fans of Jean Grey, the Phoenix, in that specific look for her. So overall, yeah, it was largely a positive reception for Jean Grey. Now moving on, we have a brand new Build-A-Figure wave. We got seven figures. They're all going to be part of the new Strange Tales wave, which... I'm very excited for. I think this is a great line. This is what I mean when I've been saying like Marvel Legends have been really drawing me in with some of their recent build of figures. Unfortunately, though, this will be an online, let's say, Fanmazon, Amazon, online retailers, that sort of deal. So it won't be in Targets, won't be in Walmart, won't be at physical department store retailer. Just FYI. So that's kind of the recent bummer with Marvel Legends. You have to get everything online, which again, it saves you time, saves you energy, saves you gas in that sense. But there's the fun, the fun of going into the store sometimes in this day and age. It's debatable, that's for sure. That being said, the first figure for this new seven figure build a figure wave is Brother Voodoo. We have seen Brother Voodoo many years ago. He has a few updates here and there. He's gonna be largely the same figure. I do believe that they said they've updated, let's say to be relatively pinless, if I'm not mistaken. Fine, it's not a character I'm like, oh yes, Brother Voodoo. I already have Brother Voodoo. He comes with a couple accessories in that sense, so not bad, they're putting something in the box with the Build-A-Figure piece. This one, though, is very cool. If you're not familiar, this is Marvel's Dracula. And I think that that is a nice addition to the whole Marvel Legends collection. See, I like when they do obscure ones. And we have had an old Marvel Legends Toy Biz box set. We had all the monsters, Dracula and that. This is going to be the newer kind of take for Dracula and his... We'll say that awful movie, Dracula Untold Armor, <laughs> the blood armor. He's got different head portraits, got a wild, wicked cape to him, sword. That's cool. I will say that, you know, fangs out, everything like that. That's a really cool way to get Dracula in there and have an adversary for Blade. I think that that's top notch. They also are going to do, and and this one, I, I just kind of, re I thought this was like a what if or a, a joke kind of thing. I think it was somebody just drew this and came up with it. No, this is a real character. It's Helverine. <laughs> Wolverine. That's been taken over by, you know, the Spirit of Vengeance, Ghost Rider kind of deal. It's cool. It's interesting. It's dumb as heck. But, hey, it makes for an interesting figure. We'll just say that. So, yes, you have the... <laughs> the adamantium skull, which has all the fire coming out. Wolverine with his adamantium fire, hellfire blades coming out of his, of course, pop closet. It looks cool. I'm just going to say at that point, it's interesting. As dumb as it is, it's a great take. And they did say that, oh, you know, that Dan, Dan unfortunately couldn't make this uh, live stream. But they kept teasing throughout this entire year, like, oh, we have a really cool... Wolverine, this is Dan's favorite, and then they backtrack and they go, this is not Dan's favorite, we have another Wolverine. I'm honestly hoping that it's the Bone Claws Onslaught Feral Wolverine. That would be my number one choice. That's the one I want to see for any more Wolverine figures. My God, we have too many. But Helverine, fine, but an Onslaught Feral Wolverine 90s, that sort of deal when he got his Bone Claws, got the adamantium ripped out, please do that figure. Please let that be the one, Dan. Let's let's get that one going. From the alternate universe, of which Toy Biz did figures for these back in the day, and it was an online exclusive, which is really funny because there's still an online exclusive for Bloodstorm. This is the vampire version, basically, of Storm. Awesome. Two head portraits, fangs out, fangs in. That's a nice touch. I'm excited for this one because of that old school sort of retro-ness of it. I go, oh yeah, I remember those figures. That was, that was a wild line. If you'd like to see me do a retro shiz, I know one of you out there, I forget your name, but you mentioned this a long time ago. Yes, I've been wanting to do this for a while. Try and make this happen ASAP, hopefully to coincide with these uh, new releases. But yes, Bloodstorm is a coming along with Damien Hellstrom. So as we all know, the, the HasLab didn't work out, so we missed a couple figures in that sense. I shouldn't say we missed them. I think that we got the point across. That was a little excessive, right? We can all agree on that. The, all the videos and all that, that aside, it was too expensive for what you got for a figure, for a character that 
Yeah, I love Ghost Rider. And I love that you have the, the engine of vengeance and you got a Ghost Rider driving it. But it's not that. And if you look at recently what McFarlane Toys are doing, they're doing Batmobile after Batmobile. I think you put too much into it. It could have just been the car, put the Ghost Rider in there, and I think people would have been set. It was too much for a character that people know very little about. If you would have done the opposite, though, for Danny Ketch and had that awesome Ghost Rider cycle, which, yes, that's coming, but really did it for a HasLab, had lights, had the sounds, the engine charging up, screams, demon screaming, kind of like what Mezco did with their Ghost Rider. I think you would have honestly hit a home run with that, but not at that price point. You gotta bring it down a little bit. HasLabs have gone too crazy, too much, too excessive. You kind of ruined the whole crowdfunding thing, Hasbro. I'm not gonna lie. It's like, let, uh, people want to. Let's just do one for every brand every year. No, it's gotta be something special. Like maybe every two years, something like that. I'm sure we'll see another Marvel Legends HasLab coming up, but at this point, what do we want? <laughs> What's left that people are actually gonna fund? You know, that kind of thing. Anyways, all that aside, we have Lilith. She makes her Marvel Legends debut. She looks pretty cool. Can't tell you too much about Lilith. I know that she's the horror character and Damien Hellstrom and all that kind of jazz. Interesting, uh, better see her in hand, I will say. I know they were kind of telling like, oh, she's got this, she's got this. Yeah, she kind of looks like a whole lot of nothing for some reason. <laughs> I have to do some research on this character. I can't really speak too much in terms of what I'm looking at, but at least we're getting a new character. I'll say that. And then we have Moon Knight. For as many Moon Knights as we've gotten, he's kind of, sort of, West Coast Avengers Moon Knight. I would say fairly close. Pretty much that character, uh, that version of Moon Knight. He's going to come with his Moonerangs and his Moon Baton and... You can see him here with the other West Coast Avengers. So yeah, for the most part, it looks pretty cool. You're gonna have to get him. I'm gonna have to get him regardless of whatever I'm saying because I'm gonna be building this Blackheart. And that is very cool. Now, saying this, the old Toy Biz Blackheart, which I am looking at as we speak on my shelf, is amazing. I still love it. Is he better than this figure? The new Marvel Legends are always going to be better than prior release stuff, but I have an attachment to that old Blackheart. I think that he's a lot more, at least for the older version, if you want to go again, video game Marvel versus Capcom, that's definitely the way to go. So definitely get the old Toy Biz one if you've never gotten him. This one is on a new body mold. He's got new pins. They've said all this. I know a lot of people are like, oh, he's got the Venom. He shares Venom. No, they said it's all new. So I'm going off of that. It looks to be an awesome Blackheart. It will be going in my collection. I think he looks rad. He's very much the Blackheart kind of sort of, I mean, I wish they would have put some blue on him, you know, that kind of thing. But if you got a Punisher and you got a uh, yeah, Ghost Rider, and you got uh, Wolverine. It might be a good enemy for them to fight, right? That would be kind of cool. Again, these will be on Amazon, fan channel, online exclusive. In that sense, pre-orders are going to go up June 20th. So you got seven figures. It looks like Helverine is the one that doesn't come with a Build-A-Figure piece. So you could skip him if you want. Every other character, yeah, you're going to have to get those. I wish it was Brother Voodoo, so I would have to get another one. But yeah, it's definitely Helverine. Bloodstorm, that's a favorite. You got Damien Hellstrom, finally Dracula. That's cool. The rest, sure, why not? But yeah, definitely looking forward to Blackheart. What are the people saying about this new Blackheart Build-A-Figure wave? Nowhere, man, he's up here again. How did I, I pick you twice? Oh my lord, he says, I've wanted a good Blackheart forever. You can go get the Toy Biz one, Dagnabbit. That's a good figure. You can get this one too, but you gotta get the... In order to buy the new Blackheart, you gotta get the old Toy Biz one. That's a precedent. That's your homework for everyone out there. Jack.Bayless.FX says, I was literally about to buy the Toy Biz Blackheart. Still might. And I said, it's still awesome. So yes, Jack.Bayless.FX, you have to. I just said it. It's part of the homework assignments to buy this so everybody can have a comparison. It's still a great figure. Yeah, he's kind of hard to stand, but it's awesome. Don't, don't get me wrong. Figures for the failed Ghost Rider has lab. Chick Magnet says, or Ch 1K Magnet says, kinda, yeah, you know, Damien Hellstrom for sure. The other ones, I'm I'm sure eventually as the years go on, we'll get those other figures some way, some form, so not to worry. That Pop Culture Guy 92 says, mid-wave with a good bath, and then he's got a bunch of ha-ha-ha's faces. Um, 
I think it's, you know, if you think that, then I don't think you're that much into Marvel Legends, right? I think that if you've been an insane Marvel Legends collector, you're going to see that, wow, this is largely all new characters besides Brother Voodoo and Blackheart. If you've not gotten the Toy Biz versions of Blackheart, then you're good. But yeah, Brother Voodoo is basically the only one. If you're not into horror, if you're not into like, we'll say the outskirts of Marvel, if you're very much the forefront, what are the characters I need? Then yeah, I could see definitely people saying, what is this? Who are these characters? I don't need this. But the the Marvel fanatics, they they know which ones uh, all these are. Dusty underscore collecting. Can't believe we're already getting a Helverine figure. I know. That's pretty cool. I like that they've kind of had a good turnaround lately. I think the one that was the quickest, perhaps it's been outdone as of this point, but it was the Red Goblin. That, again, Norman Osborn fiasco or whatever. That was great design. Makes for a great action figure. But <laughs> so dumb. But hey, yes, I agree. I, I think it's uh, pretty cool. They've been instituting newer characters so fast in action figure form. Pa underscore can do says going to take you for a ride. Ba -da -da -da. Yeah, more Street Fighter 2, X-Men, Marvel vs. Capcom, all that. Please do that because for those of you that don't know, Blackheart was part of Marvel vs. Capcom. Karki Toys I don't care for any of these figures, but damn, hope I said that right, Blackheart, finally, now we just need Shumagorath and our Marvel superheroes roster will be complete, Toy Shiz, yes, I agree with you, Karki Toys and your terrifying avatar right there, but yes, uh, Shumagorath, that would be very cool, more, more of all that, just keep bringing them on, uh, Marvel Legends team, and with that, we have the final tease of the Marvel Legends panel, a gun with a blast effect. I think you pulled the blast effect out at one point. So I say, uh, place your bets down in the comments below. Which figure will this belong to? We'll know more at STCC. The Josh note says, Mr. Freeze. <laughs> hey, he's not far off. It looks pretty cool, right? It looks like one of those freezy type guns. Fernie underscore Valdez says, the tease is Kang from the newer Timeless comics. There's a cover with him holding it. Okay, I will have to look into that. Fernie, I'll have to see about that. Gray FX says, no explanation of what that boulder was for the last tease, question uh, mark. If you don't know, the prior Marvel Legends panel live stream, they had a boulder. It kind of looks like the boulder that Sentinels hold in the X-Men arcade game. Whether or not that's going to be what it is remains to be seen, I'm sure. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll know more soon, or at least at SDCC, of which... Uh, yeah, you can check out my coverage during that entire Comic-Con, so that'll be fun. Dalton M. White says X-Men 97 Wave 3, maybe, or Hope Summers could be something like that. I know another person in the comments did say it kind of looks like an old Toy Biz Spider-Man gun that came uh, with one of the figures is like he's battling Venom or a supersonic kind of gun. Could be. It could be anything, but... That totally wraps it up for today's reveals. I hope you guys enjoyed this. What did you think about all these Marvel Legends figures? Which ones are you going for? Are you pre-ordering any when they eventually come about for pre-order? I'd like to know your thoughts. Also, how did you like this format? Did you like me taking people's comments from my various socials, instituting them here, having a little bit of a conversation with it? Good or bad, we're going to talk about it. Let me know what you thought about that. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, when it comes to Marvel Legends, I think they're in the, the right direction, at least for my tastes. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.